Hello, class of 530 Ethics and Sports. My name is Jake Pavlitich, and I'm here to talk about self-discipline. So to start with the introductory questions I offered, I wanted to get some input and let you think a little bit. So the first question I asked is, how often do people make their beds? For me, I do not make my bed. <laughs> um, I don't really see a point in it. Um, you know, when I was younger, my mom used to harp on me all the time to make my bed, make my bed, and I would, I would do that. But um, as of late, when, uh, you know, I, I get out of bed early, 6, 6 a.m., you know, and the long days that I go through, I mean, everyone does, I'm not complaining about that, but I just don't see a point when I'm coming back in the next day and it's already ready for me to hop into, you know, I don't have to pull any sheets back or do anything like that. So no, I personally do not make my bed. How often do people go above and beyond the expectations set by society? I believe that 80% of people, 85% of the people in this world are good people. Do they go above and beyond society? We don't, we don't know. I see it as a group, like, a clo like your close friends are the ones that do go above and beyond for you. They'll come pick you up if you had a fun night. They'll come pick you up if you have a flat tire. They'll do those things for you. Instead of having to pay someone like AAA or having Uber, these friends are there for you to help you. How often do people in your life follow through with their word? This is a big one in today's society with technology advances and everything. My parents back in the day, you know, they'd say, we have to plan out parties, we have to plan out events, skate nights, everything a week in advance because there's no phones where we can call and text and say, hey, I have to cancel. So their word back in the day was very, very important to them. Nowadays, I don't see it as much in our friendships and our younger generation of people. Moving forward, what is self-discipline? Webster defines self-discipline as the ability to pursue what one thinks no matter the temptations. Some leaders that involved with uh, talking about self-discipline, Jesse Owens, he says, we all have dreams, but in order to make dreams become reality, it takes an awful lot of determination, dedication, and self-discipline and effort. And Jesse James, Jesse Owens, Jesse James, Jesse Owens was a was a runner um, and he won the Olympics back in 1916. And he believed like every day I need to get better. Um, and I see every day self-discipline, you need to get better and to strive for excellence as much as possible. In the, in in the in Al Placino in the inches speech, in, um, he talks about how his football players are three minutes from the biggest days of their lives and games of their lives. Well. They come into this environment, hostile environment, and he talks about how the game of football is like the game of life. You can be one half a second too slow or too fast and you don't quite catch it. One half a second too short, too long, and you don't quite make it. That's kind of how it is in life. If you look at it at a big, bigger perspective, self-discipline in life, you know, like it, it's out there and you as a per as a as an individual need to either accomplish those goals or reset new ones moving forward with the leader's perspective we all have a we all have a choice everyone has a choice it's the easy way or the hard way the amount of self-discipline that you have determines your work ethic and the route you will take in life i'm not saying easy people aren't successful and great people and i'm not saying the hard way people are easy and successful are hard way is easy is successful as well i'm saying whichever way they go they need to do it the right way so easy way you can say those people are a little more lazy i, I would assume but they could have had it off a little easier with not everyone's equal in that sense why does everyone not have self-discipline i had to reflect a little bit on this question and the first thing i came up with is when you're young Self-discipline is taught from your parents. Well, you could lack the support system, um, and your support system will say, hey, that's not really important, you know, your self-discipline. That, it, it's taught by watching and learning. Um, and another area of why someone wouldn't have self-discipline is it takes time and energy to create and accomplish the goals necessary that you provide. And everyone in today's society wants immediate results. You see someone go to the gym, they want the results of looking good in their shirts off as guys, and girls wanna have a nice looking physique. And for males, they want that instant result, instant feedback, you know, oh, I just bench pressed 225. Yeah, okay, cool, but what were your goals, what were you doing 
before the last two months. They don't talk about those goals from the beginning. They want the immediate results. Um, one of the book references I used is from Maxwell, page three. Um, an ethical undilemma can be defined as an undesirable or unpleasant choice relating to moral principle or practice. What do we do in such situations? Do we do the easy thing or the right thing? And like I said earlier, self-discipline takes effort to work towards your personal goals. And now I pull up the scripture, passage, scripture passages and I find some in the Bible, Proverbs 25, 28 and 2 Timothy 1, 7. Proverbs 25, 28 says, A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Humans have to have boundaries and discipline to achieve goals. I put that under there. You need some sort of follow, like follow through and some sort of pathway to achieve those goals. You can't just go out and say, okay, I'm going to do this right now without knowing anything. You need to set and obtain achievable goals. 2 Timothy 1 chapter, verse 7 says, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love, along with self-control. Fear has potential to hold someone back from his or her own goal. You got to go out there and attack it, set those goals, and you need to achieve them. And fear is a big reason why you are not going to achieve those goals. And one can also gain power to achieve his or her own goals. So with that being said, um, power and love is a very huge thing that's in our society and moving towards things, moving towards um, success. And people need to have trust that he, he will be able to help us through. Moving forward to Emily Thompson, her quote, um, it says, self-discipline isn't just something that happened once and you're done, it's a practice. And I gave the example, you know, of schoolwork, full-time student, sports, interests, everything. It's Self-discipline is an everyday grind that one person can achieve. But that everyday grind is leading up as a process towards the end result and goal that you would make. Teddy Roosevelt quilt says, with self-discipline, most anything is possible. You can basically, if your mind works where your body physically can't, a sharp mind is successful. You will be able to achieve your goals if the mindset is right. And conclusion coming in, importance of self-discipline. It allows you to take action on a daily basis. You're able to wake up in the morning and know what you need to do and when you need to do it. And one allows them to make choices in your own life. Like you're allowed to make your decisions and but you have to live with those consequences and live with those successes and failures and the references right here on the sheet you guys will see and that is all thank you very much